Hey everyone, it's Mark Arnold. I'm here with Picosan Arts. Um, I'm working out of my home studio today and I'm going to teach you how I make one of my mugs. They're a combination of a press molded foot, the top's made out of a slab and then shaped on the pottery wheel, and then the handle is a press molded handle. Um, so I'm going to get started and go over my processes for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is roll out a cylinder or roll out a slab um, that's going to get pressed into the foot of the mold. Um, when I get to that part, you'll see the mold, but it's a plaster mold that I center onto the wheel. So I'm going to start with rolling the slab out. And I'm just using a rolling pin and two sticks that are somewhere in between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. So it's a pretty thin slab. So I'm just going to work my way around the piece, stretching it out until I know it's larger than what I need to drape into the mold. Okay, now I'm going to just roughly cut out a circle that's a little bit larger than what needs to be um, draped into the mold. And then I'm going to put that aside for the next, for later. The next thing I'm going to do is create the cylinder that goes on top of it. And this is also a slab. And I have a tar paper template here that ends up getting rolled up and that turns into the cylinder that gets um, dropped into the top of the mold. So again, I'm gonna use the same rolling pins. Same stick and rolling pins and um, roll out a slab. That is, um, larger than the template I'm using. So now I'm just gonna roughly cut out, um, a rough cut out a little bit larger than the template. And then discard the excess clay. So what I'm gonna use now is, I'm gonna create some texture in the piece. And these are little texture rollers that I've made out of, um, just a cylinder, and then I carved the texture into it and bisked it. Um, so now I'm just gonna gently roll that in to create a texture in the cylinder, or in the slab. And now I'm gonna lay the template back down and fully trace out the template to give me the exact size slab um, that I need to create the cylinder. Okay, so now you can see I rolled all that texture into it. So I'm gonna be really careful that I don't um, mess up that texture too much. So what I'm gonna do now is um, bevel the edges of the slab Connecting slabs together at 45 degree angles gives you a stronger connection point than if you were to connect them at 90s. So now I'm gonna slip and score this side. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over and do the same to the other side. I'm flipping and scoring this side as well. All right, so now I'm going to gently roll up the slab and create the cylinder. Um, kind of eyeball those two 45s in the seams to be together. And just press them together enough that it's going to stick. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, this is a plaster cone that um, is actually from the Mexican restaurant next door to Picos Arts. It's one of their... Um, from their sweet teas and I filled the cup with plaster and um, got that form out of it. So what I'm gonna do is gently um, put the cylinder over the piece and then I'm gonna use this roller again. Um, I just wanna eyeball and make sure all the seams are good, but I'm gonna use this roller again and just really compress that seam together. So you can see it also took the texture away. So while it's on the cylinder, I'm gonna go back in and then add the texture back to it. 
and then just make sure that I can press those little nubbins down. So that's giving me the cylinder that's going to go in the top of the mold. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use a banding wheel and flip this upside down. And now I'm going to slip and score the bottom edge of where it's going to attach into the mold. What's nice is I have the seam line so I can go around the piece um, and know where the seam is. I usually start there and then I'll go around the piece twice to make sure I have enough slip and um, I was aggressive enough with the scoring. Okay. So the next part, we're going to move over to the wheel. All right, so now we're at the wheel here, and I have my plaster foot mold. Um, it's the reverse of the shape of uh, my foot, and I use a Giffen grip to center it onto the wheel. It just makes it easier as I'm interchange, um, changing out for different forms, different mugs, bowls, whatever I'm making that day. So I'm going to start with just taking little pieces of clay and just randomly pressing them into the mold. This is really cr gonna create that um, texture that you've seen on the bottom of the finished piece. Tragic magic, prayers of passion. Stay the same through changing fashion. To freeze my mind like water on a winter's night. Spend most of my youth, I Now I'm going to take the original slab, the, the first one that I rolled out, and gently start to drape that down into the mold. So by doing this, it's going to give me a, a really consistent um, slab on the inside, so that I know that the wall thickness is the same throughout. Okay, now with minimal water, what I'm going to do is just um, start compressing those together. And I don't want to use a lot of water because I don't want to saturate the mold too much and it not want to, the piece not want to separate from the mold. Now I'm going to use a rubber rib and just really compress that inside together, uh, smoothing it out. If I compress too hard, I'm going to smooth out all the little pieces that I pushed in and it's going to be... Um, I'll remove all the texture. If I don't push hard enough, those pieces are going to fall apart, fall out. So it's just finding that fine, fine line of um, how hard to press. So now I'm going to use a needle tool and cut off the excess. And once I feel it make contact with the plaster, I'm going to pull away and then tear off the excess. So. When I was cutting that off, I was trying to get it to that inside bevel as close as possible. So the inside wall was coming up like this and it's flat. I want to be right on that corner as much as possible to um, have the form be the way that I want it to be. So now I'm going to slightly throw a little wall right here on that outside edge. And it's not much, but right on that edge, it's going to help me center the cylinder to connect it to. All right, so now I'm scoring the bottom and I'm gonna grab the second piece that I've made, the cylinder, and then gently center that inside of the mold. So what I'm gonna do now is start with my left hand on the inside and start stretching it out to that little bevel that I added to the base. And with my right hand, I'm holding it steady. So now I know this part down here is centered within the mold. Um, so I'm gonna go on the inside with a rib that has a little um, rounded corner and just compress that inside seam. And then on the outside of it, while I'm supporting the inside, I'm gonna um, compress that outside edge in and it's creating this really rough line here that I really like and there's not really another way to create that on the piece. I really, um, I'm really interested in 
concrete and cities being weathered over time. So to me, that just resembles some like really old busted up concrete. So now at this point, I'm pretty much starting. It's like centering a pot on the wheel. So I have a cylinder. So I'm gonna compress the lip and then start shaping it. So lips compressed, I'm gonna use a chamois to round it over a little bit. Take any sharp edges off of it. And now I'm gonna use a, another soft rubber rib and start stretching it from the inside. If I touch it on the outside, I'm gonna lose any of that texture that I had added. So I'm trying to give it a little bit more volume and shape from the inside. I'm also being aware that I'm not getting too much water all over the piece. Um, with this one, I can see it got a little out of hand, a little too wavy on the lip. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of the excess off. I'm gonna find the lowest point and use a cheese slicer. And I'll cut that just to be a little bit more level. I don't mind if they have a wave to it, but that one just had a little too much of a wave to it. So now I'll go back in and do the same thing where I'm gonna compress the lip back down and then round it over with a chamois. Okay. I wanna shape the outside a little bit more, but I'm not able to touch it too much right now. So what I'm gonna do is um, first I'm gonna clean up the seam line a little bit on the inside. And I wanna indent it somewhere around here so that when my handle comes over it, um, the form just has a little more, bit more of a curve and there's a little more room for your finger. So right on the seam line, I'm gonna gently press in. And then I'm gonna go around the piece and I'm just gently pushing it away from the mold for any moisture that I might've trapped in there to get it to release easier. And then any dents, I'm just gonna smooth them back out. So now to get that dent on the outside that I want, I'm gonna have to heat this up and dry it out so I don't um, take away any of the texture. So I'm gonna use a um, hand torch to do that. So it's gonna be loud here for a minute. Things a little bit. So I want to, I usually heat it up till it starts steaming and a little bit more where I know I want to dent that in. So supporting on the inside. I'm gonna hold it in and then on the outside, just start pushing that form in. So do you see that it gave it a little bit more of an hourglass curve, but I didn't uh, remove any of the texture from it. So next thing is I'm just gonna start um, gently wiggling it to get it to remove from the mold. And now the piece popped out of the mold and it has the textured foot on it. Right now, it has a really sharp edge going around the piece. So I'm just going to use a little bit of water on my finger and just go and fold that edge over to create another um, really rough line around the bottom of the piece. But it's also smoothing it as I go. Okay, so that's how I make my mug forms. Um, you can see the texture, there's the slat or the seam line from the cylinder. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is attach a handle to it. Okay, now that that mug is um, set up and leather hard, I'm going to attach a handle to it. So, um, yeah, you can see all the textures and everything from the piece, like from the texture rollers and from the press mold. Um... I tend to attach the handle at the seam line, not to try to hide it, but it just always ends up being the point that just makes the most sense of where to attach it. So 
for my handles, I use a two-part press mold. So I modeled a handle out of clay and then I um, poured plaster over it and made a two-part mold. And then I packed the clay into that and then it gives me a consistent, comfortable handle. All right, so I'm gonna start off by packing the clay into the molds. So with this, I'm gonna use a coil and I'm just really just packing that clay down in and make sure and making sure it gets um, all the way into the bottom of the mold. So I'm just really making sure I work that down and compressing it. And then what I'm gonna do is use a um, rubber rib and starting on the outside, work my way in. And the reason I'm doing that is, if you look here, you can see how a little bit of the clay tore out. If I started here and worked all the way around, I'd rip the clay out. So by working to the center, it compresses it and makes it stronger. So in that little area that the clay came out of, I'm just gonna add a little bit more back into it. So now everything's flush inside of the mold. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same to the second side. <clears throat> Again, just really making sure I pack that clay in. I don't want to have, um, like, if I don't push it all the way down, it's going to be kind of an inconsistent surface and um, not be the aesthetic, the aesthetic that I'm looking for it to be. So, again, just scraping that excess clay off and then backfilling the extra that tore out. Okay. And now, typically, you'd think you'd slip and score these so that um, to hold together. Right now, there's nothing in holding it together. And I don't want to use too much water because I want to be able to pop this out instantly and not really have to wait for it. So what I'm going to do is um, roll out a little coil and pinch it on following the shape of the handle. So as you can see here, there's a coil attached. And that's going to give me the excess clay um, that's going to smush the two together and um, join the two parts. The other part it's going to do is it's going to leave a really nice seam line um, that just kind of references like the seam line in the cup, all the process. Um, I'm not really hiding any of my process, so I really like that idea with the handle showing that also. So I'm doing the same thing now. I'm scraping the excess off of this part. Okay, I'm gonna discard the excess, the extra clay. So now, I don't know if you could tell, but it has a kind of a curve to it. And that's gonna match up a little bit better with the curve of the cup. So now what I wanna do is gently, um, I'm gonna pull these apart. And then I'm looking inside and I could tell that this side released and it's still stuck on to this side. So I'm going to finish releasing this side, but then put it back in and pull and get the other side to release also. And then the handle is able to pop out of the mold. And this is the seam line that I was talking about um, keeping. So I'm gonna, that won't be comfortable, that'll be sharp and cut you and be extremely fragile. So I'm gonna do is start just pressing that down and then putting a little bit of water on my thumb and just smoothing it out. Um, I'll refine a little bit more when it's attached, but just trying to um, make that so it's not sharp. And then there's also a seam line on the inside. And for now, I'm just gonna, um, Take the needle tool and just kind of trim out that excess. And then after I attach it, I'll smooth out the rest. All right, so I'm gonna, um, just so I can eyeball the handle a little bit more, I'm gonna lay a towel down so that I can make sure that whenever I'm attaching the handle, it, everything's straight, I'm looking at it this way so that the handle's not put on crooked. So I'm gonna um, 
eyeball where I want the handle to be. And then just take a needle tool and I'm going to um, score around the outside of it, trace around the outside of it, so I know where to score the inside. So I just kind of have these little marks on the inside and I'm going to um, score them so that the attachment is stronger. So I'm just really roughing up the surface. So now I'm going to do the same to the part of the handle that's going to attach. Okay, and now I'm going to use a little bit of um, slip. I'm brushing the slip on the inside of the handle here. And then I'm going to um, sit it back on the cup and put it within the marks that I had left. Scratch into it, and now I'm going to start pressing down and um, getting it to join to the piece. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going around the piece and I'm pushing it in so that it's really making a strong connection. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to my fingers and do that and just go around it and uh, make sure everything's a consistent shape. Okay. When I say a consistent shape, I'm looking at this curve and I'm trying to make that curve and all the way around the everything to be um, consistent and kind of unified in the same shape around it. And then I'm going to take my finger the same way that I would hold the mug and I'm just running it through the inside to smooth it out and make that comfortable. So the next thing I'm going to do is take, um, this is just a skewer for cooking. And um, I don't know the best way to get this so you can see it. Is um, I'm taking it and I'm just outlining the handle. So you can see how I like um, highlighted the connection point. So I'm going to do that around the top and bottom connection points. Okay, so now it's kind of highlighted. It gives it an extra um, compression that helps it from cracking. I don't slow dry my pots. Um, after I attach the handle and carve the decoration into it, I go right into um, drying. I just put it on the shelf and let it go. But there's also some like burrs on the piece. So I'm just going to use another soft brush and just go around that and soften those edges so there's nothing that's going to cut you. And then just around the entire handle, I'm just using the brush just to soften everything and make sure that um, there's no sharp edges. So the last thing I'm going to do is just um, kind of eyeball it and make sure everything's in the position I want. Sometimes it's just pushing up on the bottom and giving it a little bit more lift. So, oops. Can't see out there. So this is how I might make my mugs. Um, I'll let it sit up for a little bit and then end up doing some carving and decoration to it. But I'll leave that for a video for next week. Um, so if you have any questions, you can go to um, www.pocosanarts.org and um, check into some resources. Um, we teach weekly adult classes. We have workshops throughout the year. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Have a good day.